pay with blood. I want to start off by giving all honor and glory to Yahweh Bashem Yahushah, Bashem Rechakalash Lai Walam Yum. I want to give double honors to my elders and apostles of Great Millstone for teaching the sound doctrine. Strong shalom to you men and women out there doing this work diligently and chiefly keeping the faith, making your calling and your election sure. We're going to get right into it here. Um, I got this uh, image pulled up of blood, right? The priestess I'm going to bring out is going to identify and inform everyone who listen that our oppressors, they have to pay with blood, man, right? They can't pay with money. They're not going to be able to pay with anything but their blood, man, right? Because blood have they shed, so blood shall they shed, right? Blood shall uh, uh, they let go, right? Blood shall um, they lose, because our people, the Israelites, they lost a lot of blood, man. So hopefully, you know, the spirit uh, edify everyone that listens, man. Let's get right into it. Some precepts here. Genesis chapter 9 and verse 6, right? Genesis 9 and 6. These oppressors got to pay with blood because they shed man's blood, man. Right? Um, here it is. Genesis 9 and 6, whoso sheddeth man's blood by man shall his blood be shed. For in the image of God made he man, right? So I'm going to read this again. Genesis 9 and 6, whoso sheddeth man's blood by man shall his blood be shed. For in the image of God made he man. So you look around and you see our people, our, our blood is constantly, you know, being shed. Throughout the four corners of the earth, man, through under all these nations, they shed blood. So now, by man shall their blood be shed, and that's what they fear, man. You understand? They fear their true justice, their their true righteous judgment, man. You understand? Let's get Second Ezra chapter five and verse eight real quick, man. By uh, if you shed man's blood, by man shall your blood be shed, and that's just justice, man. That's that's balance. Second Ezra chapter fifteen and verse eight, real quick. So, okay, 2nd Ezra 15 and verse 8. It says, I will hold my tongue no more as touching their wickedness, which they profanely commit. Neither will I suffer them in those things in which they wickedly exercise themselves. Behold, the innocent and righteous blood crieth unto me, and the souls of the just complain continually, man. Right? The righteous blood crieth unto the Lord, man. Continually. You understand? Imagine all of the uh, so-called Native Americans who died for them to take this land, man, for the Edomites to take this land. Over 100 million died, man. Imagine the souls of the just that's at the bottom of the ocean, man. You understand? That's, that's crazy, man. That's the righteous blood. Imagine all the men and women and children that was, that was hung on a tree. You know? That's crazy, man. Over the course of time, right? The Lord said the, the innocent and righteous blood crieth unto him, man. Eh? You understand? But this is what the Lord said. Um, Second Ezra chapter 15, verse 9, it says, And therefore saith the Lord, I will surely avenge them and receive unto me all the innocent blood from among them, man. Eh? Right? The Lord said he will surely avenge us, man. Eh? You know, um, what's that? Second Thessalonians 1 and 6. Let's get it real quick. Then we're going to come back to that. 2 Thessalonians 1 and 6. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 6. He says, Seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you, man. Verse 7. And to you who are troubled, rest with us. When the Lord Yahawashah, who the word ignorant calls Jesus, when the Lord Yahawashah shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. Verse 8. In flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Yahweh Shahamashiach. Verse 9, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power, man. Right? So you can continue on reading through this, man, but you have to understand that uh, the wicked, the, oppre the oppressors shall pay with their blood, man. Right? They shall pay, the Lord shall take vengeance upon them. You understand what I'm saying? They shall pay with blood, man. Just like you see in this image right here, they shall pay with their blood. You understand? How can they how can they um give us justice? How can they pay us back with blood, man? Just what the scriptures is bringing out, right? Going back over to that um 
Second Thessalonians, the scriptures, not Second Thessalonians, so like in Second Ezra chapter 15, the scriptures bringing out what? That the righteous blood is crying unto the Lord, man. And these people don't, they don't give a damn about destroying the righteous blood. They don't give a damn about destroying the righteous, man. Right? They don't care. Let's get the wisdom of Solomon. Chapter uh, 2, real quick. The thoughts of the ungodly, man. Right? The wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2, says, uh, wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2, and verse 10, it says, Let us oppress the poor, righteous man. Let us not spare the widow, nor reverence the ancient gray hairs of the age. Verse 11, Let our strength be the law of justice, for that which is feeble is found to be nothing worth. Verse 12, Therefore let us lie and wait for the righteous, because he is not for our turn. And he is clean contrary to our doings. He upbraided us with our offending the law and objected to our infamy, the transgressions of our education, man. Right? So we are contrary to the wicked, right? We are contrary to the oppressor. So that's why they constantly destroy us and uh, put us down, man, and destroy and uh, uh, take our blood and shed our blood, man. Because why? Verse, uh, Wisdom of Solomon chapter 2 verse 13 He professes to have the knowledge of God And he calleth himself the child of the Lord man. So they hate the children of the Lord They hate the children of power man. They jealous man. They can't stand The children of power You understand why? Wisdom of Solomon chapter 2 of verse 14 He was made to reprove our thoughts right? So we were made to reprove The thoughts of the wicked You understand To be their counterpart the Lord has said two, good versus evil, right? Hot against cold, you understand? So these nations shall pay with blood. They shall pay with the blood, man. With their blood, actually. You understand? Right? So the wicked is contrary to the righteous. You understand what I'm saying? Let's get Ezekiel 25 and 12 real quick. Ezekiel 25 and 12. They shall pay, man. With their blood. Ezekiel 25 and verse 12. We can read to. Um, we can read to verse 14. It says. Thus saith the Lord God. Because that Edom have dealt against the house of Judah. By taking vengeance. And have greatly offended. And revenged himself upon them. Verse 13. Therefore thus saith the Lord God. I will also stretch out my hand upon Edom and will cut off man and beast from it and will make it desolate from Taman and they of the dawn shall fall by the sword. Verse 14, and I will lay my vengeance upon Edom by the hand of my people Israel and they shall do in Edom according to mine anger and according to my fury and they shall know my vengeance, saith the Lord God, man. So didn't I bring out Genesis chapter 9 and verse 6? It says, Who, whosoever or he that sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood be shedded. Right here, it lets you know that the Lord said what? Ezekiel 25 and 14, it says, And I will lay my vengeance upon Edom. Who is Edom? The so-called whites. You understand? They're not white, they're red. Right? Esau. Wasted away is he, right? You understand? Ezekiel 25 and 14, And I will lay my vengeance upon Edom. By the hand of my people Israel. So don't figure, don't try to, uh, you know what I'm saying, slither away from this, man. You understand? By the hand of his people Israel, Yashirala, the 12 tribes of Israel, the so called blacks, the Native, the Native Americans, and the, um, you know what I'm saying, and the Hispanics, man. Those are God's chosen people. And by the hand of Israel shall Edom uh, uh, go down, man. This links up with what? Obadiah chapter 1 and verse 18, man. Right? We could get there right after this. Right after, right after, right after I read this. Like it. You know? The Lord will uh, use the hand of his people Israel, man, to bring these people down to the ground, man. Right? He will put the spirit on the people. This links up with also Jeremiah chapter 16 and verse 16. Right? He will send for many hunters. And you understand? And they, they shall hunt them from every cliff and every, and every mountain. Let's get that Obadiah real quick. There we get the Jeremiah 16 to 16. Uh, Obadiah 1 and verse 18, it says, right, this is, just sum it up. 
And the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau a stubble, and they shall kindle in them and devour them, and there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for the Lord hath spoken it, man. This is the judgment to the so-called whites, the Edomites, man. You understand? This is their judgment. They shall be hunted, man. You understand? They shall be hunted and set on fire off the face of the fucking earth. And this is their judgment for their perpetual hatred that they have towards the chosen people, man. You understand? These other nations, they going to go back into their lands and be forced to serve Yahweh Bashem Yahushua. But Esau, man, the wicked, the border of wickedness, according to Malachi 1 and 4, these shall be wiped out, man. You understand? I don't know what the Lord is going to do with their spirits in the Shemayim, but on this earth, they shall be wiped off. Like the scripture says, they sh there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for the Lord hath spoken it, man. Jeremiah chapter 16 and verse 16. Behold, I will send for many fishers, saith the Lord, and they shall fish them. And after will I send for many hunters, and they shall hunt them from every mountain and from every hill and out of the holes of the rocks, man. So what is this telling you? This telling you that the Lord right now, he sent the prophets out to fish the elect, right? To fish the elect. But after this fishing period, right, Ecclesiastes 3 and 1 let you know it's the time and the place for everything. So right now, this is a fishing season. But in, in a moment, in a swift moment, it's going to be hunting season, right? And the Lord shall send them hunters, right, to every high mountain, meaning high, every government, right? Every low government, meaning every hill, and out of the holes of the rocks, those deep underground military bunkers, man, right? They shall be, they shall be hunted, man. You understand? By, by man's hands shall your blood be shedded by the children of Israel. Like Ezekiel chapter 25 brought out, man. By the hand of his people Israel shall, you, shall your blood be shed, right? Because that's swift, speedy judgment. That's swift recompense of the Lord's um, promise from the beginning, man. Right? Let's get uh, Genesis 49 and 9 real quick. We're going to read to 10. Genesis 49 and 9. It says, I'll read to 10. Genesis 49 and 9, Judah is a lion's whelp. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. He stooped down, he, crouch, he crouched as a lion, and as an old lion, who shall rouse him up? Right? What is this going into? This is going into how our people have lost our might. We are really powerful people, but we are a crouched lion. We are oppressed, man. You understand? We are down. We are, you know what I'm saying, uh, uh, afflicted, right, by the many wounds but from these nations. But the scriptures put the question now, who shall rouse them up? Who shall rouse them up? The spirit, right? That's why Isaiah chapter 34 and 16 says, Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. None of these words shall fail. None shall warn our mate. And his spirit, it had gathered them. What it had gathered them? John 6 and 63. It is the, the, uh, it is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. These words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life, man. You understand? So who shall rouse them up? This spirit shall rouse them up. This wisdom, this knowledge, this understanding. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh shall rise up that, that crouch old lion, man. You understand? And who will be able to stand before that lion when he roar? Nobody, man. You understand? Not these other nations. Genesis chapter 49 and verse 10, it says, The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come and and unto him shall the gathering of the people be, man, right? Because the Lord putting everything back in order, right? Putting everything back in balance. Put everything back in balance in that perfect sequence. You understand? Right? Put everything back in order so his judgment can be uh, brought forth. You know? Let's get Revelation 18 and 6 real quick. Then we're going to wrap it up with a couple more precepts. Revelation chapter 18 and verse 6. It says, Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her, double according to all her works, and the cup which she hath filled, filled to her double. Man, I'm going to start at verse um, I'm going to start at verse 4. It says, 
Revelation 18 and 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye read Salakia. Revelation 18 and 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. What plague is coming? Zechariah chapter 14, verse 12. He said, Come out of her, my people. Who is that her? That's talking about Babylon, right? That's talking about uh, the whore that sits upon many waters, man. You understand? It's talking about America, right? Come out of her, right? So you don't be uh, partakers of her plague. So go a plague right here. Zechariah chapter 14, verse 12. This is the plague that the Lord is talking about. You don't want to be a partaker of this plague that's coming. Zechariah 14 and 12. And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet. And their eyes shall consume away in their holes. And their tongue shall consume away in their mouth, man. All right? This is the plague that the Lord is warning the people to, to, uh, to watch out for, man. To watch and pray you don't be partaker of this plague, man. You understand? Run out of Babylon mentally and run to your how about should be able to shop. Proverbs 18 and 10 lets you know that the, the, that the, uh, the fear of the Lord... I mean, Salaki, that the name of the Lord is a strong tower and a righteous runneth, runneth into it and is safe, man. Right? So the scriptures tell you to reward her, tell us to reward her eat double. Reward her as she, has, as she has done us. Right? So, what, she shed it our blood? So her blood shall be shed. It. These nations shed it our blood, so their blood shall be shed, it, man. And that's only right. It's only justice. Let's get Nahum 3 and 1. Nahum, three, Nahum chapter 3 and verse 1, it says, Woe, W-O-E, meaning destruction. Woe to the bloody city. It is all full of lies and robbery. The prey departeth not, right? Right, destruction to the bloody city. America and all these other nations were built on nothing but blood, man, off the backs of our peoples, right? Right, destruction to the bloody city, the scripture says, man. The structure to the uh, America and all these other nations that are drinking and drunk with the wine of her philosophies. Nahum chapter 3 verse 1. Destruction. Woe to the bloody city. It is all full of lies and robbery. The prey part of not. Full of lies and robbery. The Jewish people call themselves the real uh, the real Jews, man. They're Jewish. They're, they want to be the Jews, but they are not, man. They're imposters. They claim to be us. They robbed our heritage and laid a, and, and lied about it, man. Right? You understand? Destruction to them, man. All right? Let's get Habakkuk 2 and 12. Just precepts to link up with this. Habakkuk 2 and 12. It says, Woe to him that buildeth a town with blood and establisheth a city by iniquity. So you look around and you see, look at the different countries. Who have established, who have built their town, who have built their country on, on blood, man? On the blood of who? The Israelites, the saints, the slaves, man. Right? The scripture says destruction to him that built a town with blood and, and established a city with iniquity. Right? Destruction, man. You understand? You, you want to you wanna constantly spill the saints' blood? Your blood shall be shed, man. It's just that simple. It's just that simple, man. You understand? You shall pay with blood. You ain't going to pay with your do your money that don't mean shit. You ain't going to pay with none of that. You ain't going to pay with I'm sorry. None of that. Right? You're going to pay with blood. That's what you're going to pay with. Blood, man. And that's why y'all so scared. Because the elite knows that they have to pay with blood. You got the kids saying, whoa, it's not me. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. But the scriptures tell you what? Pay. You're going to have to pay for what your forefathers have done, man. Let's get it. Isaiah 14 and 21. Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 21. It says, prepare slaughter for his children, for the iniquity of their fathers, that they do not rise, nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the world with cities. You understand? You will not fill the face of the world with cities. You shall be put, cut off and 
dead, man. Right? Cut off and put to death for your wickedness, Esau. And all you other nations, Esau will be an a example. That's what the Lord is doing. The Lord is making Esau, Edom an example. Isaiah chapter 63 and verse 1. Who is that that come? Who is that cometh from Edom with the dyed garments from Basra? This that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. This is talking about Yahweh Shah and how he's destroying Edom, man. He has dyed garments, man. It's a lot of blood on his garments to the point where it looked like he dyed it red. Verse 2, it says, Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel? And thy garments like him that treadeth in the wine fat, man. Right? He's doing so much killing in the land of Edom. Him and his elect men doing so much killing to the Edomites, man. It looked like their garments are dyed red. Look, It looked like they were just stumping on grapes or, you know what I'm saying, making wine, man. You understand? Isaiah chapter 63, verse 3, it says, I have trodden the winepress alone, and of the people there was none with me. For I will tread them in mine anger. And trample them in my fury, and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I will stain all my raiment. Man, verse four it says, "For the day of vengeance is mine." Salakia, Isaiah sixty-three of verse four: "For the day of vengeance is in mine heart, and the year of my redeem is come." Man, this is Yahweh coming back for blood, right? Coming back for the blood of those who oppressed us. Coming back for the blood. Of those who shed man's blood, man. Right? That's what the Lord is coming back for. He coming back to save his elect. And he's coming back for mighty destruction. You understand? It's going to be like a drop to a wave. That's going to be saved. Compared to all the other people out there, man. The Lord said the day of vengeance is in his mind. He's just up there waiting on you, Howard, to give him the call. And he's going to jump down with a screech. With a screech like a woman in Travilla, the Lord is mad and he's pissed off for what these nations have done to us and for what these nations have done to him. You understand? And what our people, two-thirds of our people have done to our Lord, man. You understand? So hopefully this was edifying. I want to give all honor and glory to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh by Hashem Rekakalash Yom. Once again, double honors to my elders and apostles of Great Millstone for teaching me sound doctrine. Strong shalom one to you men and women once again doing this work diligently, chiefly keeping the faith, making your calling in your election sure. Remember that the oppress the oppressor shall pay with his blood, and he shall pay Yahweh Shah and Yahweh and the elect men that's gonna go out and fight. You understand? So hopefully once again this was edifying, man. Shalom Yashalom. On to the next one.